Hi, Bob Thompson for Smartphone Matters. Today I'm going to take a look at my Freedom Pop 3 in 1 SIM kit. In my previous video, I checked out Freedom Pop's free and premium plans. Today I'm going to open this BYOP SIM kit and try it out with both my iPhone 6S and my Nexus 6 using Android. Let's take a look at the package. It says 3 in 1 SIM, 100% free mobile phone service, Android slash iOS only, and debit or credit card required. Now let's check out the back. Enjoy plenty of minutes, text, and data when you buy a Freedom Pop SIM plan starting from just $0. And they accept MasterCard, Visa, and Amex. Now I'm going to open the package and remove the SIM card. This is the 3-in-1 SIM card, meaning it'll work with any phone that uses a standard micro or nano SIM. The card and the SIM are perforated, so you can remove the standard SIM from the plastic card, the micro SIM from the standard SIM, and the nano SIM from the micro SIM. Now it doesn't say it anywhere, but this SIM card uses the AT&T 4G LTE network. Let's look at the instructions on the inside of the package. It says, let's get started. To activate your new service, if ordered from Freedom Pop directly, your SIM is already activated. If ordered from a third-party retailer, activate your SIM at freedompop.com slash activate or call this 1-888 number. Then, to start your Freedom Pop service, if using an Android device, go to Settings Cellular APN slash Cellular Networks, then set fp.com.attz as your APN. Download Freedom Pop messaging from the Google Play Store. If using an iOS device, connect to Wi-Fi Download Freedom Pop from the iOS App Store. Once downloaded, log in and follow the instructions to configure your APN settings. And it looks like they have a QR code to help find the app in the App Store. And then finally, if you're having issues, you can check out these helpful links, frequently asked questions, support.freedompop.com, other questions and feedback, freedompop.com slash contact. Now I'm gonna try this out with both my iPhone and Android, but I'm gonna start with my iPhone. So I'm gonna put the Nexus 6 to the side. I think I'll do a separate video for Android as I don't want this video to be too long. Now, both my iPhone 6S and my Nexus 6 use a nano SIM. So I'm going to punch out the nano SIM. Okay, I'm back. I put my Freedom Pop nano SIM in my iPhone 6S. If you see in the status bar, I'm connected to the AT&T network. Now it shows I have a 4G connection, which means it's using HSPA or HSPA plus, not LTE. So I'm gonna continue on. We'll see whether or not that changes to LTE. Now the first thing I wanted to show you is that you're gonna to need to set up the APN before you are able to use data. So I'm gonna open Safari and try and visit Smartphone Matters. And you'll see it says, could not activate cellular data network because I'm not subscribed to a cellular service. And that's because I didn't follow the steps to set up the APN. So let's do that now. Now, if you remember from those directions, we saw on the back of the package, it says to install the Freedom Pop apps. And we'll search for Freedom Pop. And we'll see there are two Freedom Pop apps. There's the Freedom Pop and My Freedom Pop Mobile. Now I've gone ahead and installed both of these apps. And then if we go back to the home screen, we'll open the Freedom Pop app. And now you'll see I need to log in with my Freedom Pop account. And so just give me a minute and I'm gonna enter in that information. Okay, first, make sure to install our cellular profile slash APN to configure your phone to work with our US LTE SIM. Then tap next. For those of you who are not familiar, sometimes when you set up a cellular service on the iPhone, you need to install an APN configuration profile. So you'll see here, it says that this contains cellular settings. And then if you look at more details, it shows you the APN. You can see here the APN is fp.com.attz, just like we saw on the package. So I'm just gonna install that. Now there's a little warning message here saying that your network traffic could be monitored if you install a cellular configuration. And I think that message is new for iOS 10, so I'm just gonna go ahead and install this anyway. Now I'm done. 
Okay, so now that I've installed that profile, I'm going to turn off Wi-Fi and we'll go back to the Safari web browser and I'm gonna try and load smartphonematters.com. So you'll see cellular data is working. Now I'm gonna go back to the Freedom Pop app. It's asking for the next step, which is to allow push notifications. So I'm gonna say allow. Now it wants to import my contacts into the Freedom Pop app. I'm gonna just say yes and let it do that. Now it's asking me if I want free international calling to 50 countries or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what this trial is for, so I'm just gonna skip it. Tap, I don't want free stuff. Now Freedom Pop is asking if it can access the microphone and I'll say yes. All right, so now we're in the Freedom Pop app, but before we take a look at this, I need to explain a few things. So listen up, pay attention, this is really important. If you wanna use Freedom Pop with the iPhone, you're gonna to need to use that Freedom Pop app for making and receiving calls, sending and receiving text messages, and sending and receiving picture messages. All that happens inside of the Freedom Pop app. Watch what happens if you try and use the iPhone's phone app to make a phone call. So I'm gonna call my Nexus 5X. I don't know if you can hear that. So I'm not able to make a call using the phone app. And then I'll show you if you go into settings for phone, you'll look and see you have no phone number. And that's because when you sign up for Freedom Pop, you're just getting a data connection. All your calls, text, and picture messages are handled by the Freedom Pop app. So if we look at the Freedom Pop app again, you'll see down here they have phone, text, voicemail, your recents, and contacts. Now I think this is really important to understand. So if you're gonna use Freedom Pop with the iPhone, you're gonna to need to use this app for calls. All right, well, let's start by trying to make a call with this app. Let's call my Nexus 5X. I'm gonna put that on the speaker. Now I'm gonna decline that call, and then I'll just end the call here. Now from my Nexus 5X, I'm gonna try calling back to my iPhone 6S, which has the Freedom Pop SIM in it. Yeah, it's dialing. That's uh, pretty fancy. Now I'm just gonna let this ring through and see if it goes to voicemail. trying to reach at one six one seven is not available. Please leave a message after the tone. Hi Bob, it's uh, Bob. I'm just checking out to see if Freedom Pop I'm just checking to see if Freedom Pop voicemail works. Talk to you later. Okay, so I left a voicemail message. And you'll see there's the notification. So let's check the voicemail. And I don't know if you can hear that, but the voicemail did come through. Sounds pretty good, pretty clear. All right, I'll delete that. Okay, so you'll see that I'm able to make and receive phone calls and receive voicemail, but I have to use the Freedom Pop app to do it. Okay, now let's try sending a text message. And it looks like Freedom Pop wants access to my photos. I'm gonna say yes. 
So I'll just send a message hi. And you'll see I've received the message here on my Nexus 5X. So now I'm going to reply. I'll send back a hi. And you'll see I received that message. OK, so now I'm going to try sending a picture message using Freedom Pop to my Nexus 5X. Now you can see Freedom Pop is asking to access the camera. And I'll just take a picture of what's on the desk. And we'll use that photo. And we'll say send. All right, the photo has been sent. So now we'll wait and see if we receive it on the Nexus 5X. Hey, while we're waiting for that picture message, I thought I'd point out, you'll see now I'm connected to the LTE network. And you'll see I just received the picture message. So I'll respond by sending another picture of what's on my desk. All right, you'll see I received that picture message. So I've just shown you that I'm able to send and receive text messages. I'm also able to send and receive picture messages. But again, on the iPhone with Freedom Pop, I needed to do it from the Freedom Pop app. Okay, now I'm back. I wanted to talk a little bit more about messages. So messages is a pretty important app for most iPhone users. They use it to exchange text and picture messages with family and friends. And if you want to use Freedom Pop, it's important to understand how Messages is going to work with that service. All right, so a little bit about Messages. Messages exchanges text and pics two different ways. If you're exchanging messages with another iPhone user or someone using an Apple product, the messages are delivered using iMessage. iMessage is a service that's run by Apple and it uses your internet connection, so that's either going to be your cellular data connection or your Wi-Fi connection, to exchange those messages. Now, if you're exchanging messages, that's text or pics, with someone that's not using an iPhone, so maybe an Android phone or some other kind of phone, messages will use SMS for text messages and MMS for picture messages. Now, SMS and MMS, that's just the uh, technology that wireless companies use to exchange messages. Okay, so now what's important to understand if you're using Freedom Pop is that messages is gonna to continue to work for sending messages to people that are using iPhones. But for any other kind of text or picture messages you get, they're gonna to go to the Freedom Pop app. So that means anyone that's using an Android phone, any kind of text message alerts you get from your doctor, your pharmacy, or your bank, those are gonna to go to the Freedom Pop app. So let me show this to you a little bit closer now. I sent a message to this iPhone from another one of my iPhones here. And if I open messages, you'll see I have a message that was sent to me from my other phone. I sent this message using my iPhone, you received it using iMessage, reply and your message will be in a blue bubble. So I'm gonna to reply to that. And you'll see that my reply is in the blue bubble. Now, if you look carefully up here too, it says that the message was delivered using iMessage. So now, anyone that sends you a message from another iPhone or any message that you receive that's sent via iMessage is going to show up in messages. But if somebody sends you a text message from an Android phone, another type of phone or some other kind of service that's sending you text message reminders, those are gonna to go to the Freedom Pop app. And let me show you. I have my Nexus 5X here, and I'm gonna send this message. And you'll see that I got a notification that I received a message. And you'll see I have a little badge on the Freedom Pop app. And if I tap on that, 
you'll see I sent this message from my Nexus 5X. You received it using SMS. Notice it was delivered to the Freedom Pop app. Okay, now let me show you what happens if I try and send a text message from my iPhone using Freedom Pop to my Nexus 5X using the Messages app. All right, so I'm here inside of Messages, and you can see I have the message addressed. Now I'll just send a hi. And you'll see that the message looks like it was sent. But I never receive it on my phone over here. And once again, if I send a message from here on the Nexus, you'll see it was received with the Freedom Pop app. Okay, I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out if I could get my Freedom Pop phone number added to the send and receive field for iMessage. You can see that my phone says it's waiting for activation. Now what I did is I went into settings for the phone and I added my Freedom Pop phone number, but you can see iMessage is not able to complete activation. Now it still works, I can send and receive iMessages but they're addressed to my email address, not to my phone number. I think the problem is, is that iMessage needs SMS to be working in the background so that it can complete the activation. And because I'm using the Freedom Pop service, I don't have real SMS on this phone. My text messages are being delivered through the Freedom Pop app. Now, certainly that is a lot to try and figure out and understand. Now, I did want to point out that they do have an FAQ or some tech support instructions on freedompop.com for setting up iMessage. And I'll continue to work on this and see if I could get it to work. But for right now, you'll see I'm only able to send and receive iMessages using my email address and not my Freedom Pop phone number. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you was the My Freedom Pop app. You can use this app to track your account. I'm just going to log in quickly here. Now you'll see I can track my broadband usage and there's some other features. If you look here, you'll see I've used about 15 megabytes of data on this plan. There's some other options here to get more broadband like earn free data or upgrade your data plan. If we look under earn free data, you'll see I've already earned 200 megabytes of data simply by installing this app. And I can earn more data by completing offers or inviting friends. And if we go back here and look under Upgrade Data Plan, you'll see I'm on the premium GSM 1 gigabyte plan, but there are also 2, 3, and 4 gigabyte plans available. Now, I'm not going to go through all the features in this app. I just wanted to show you that it's available, and it's nice to have an app to manage your account. Now, the only thing I'll say about that app is I notice that sometimes it crashes, and it seems to crash more when I'm connected to Wi-Fi. And we'll see if we see that here. And you'll see it just crashed there. Now, for some reason, like I said, it just seems to crash when I'm connected to Wi-Fi. But I thought I'd share that with you, too. Okay, we covered a lot today. I showed you the SIM card. I installed it in my iPhone. I installed the Freedom Pop apps, and I installed the APN profile to get cellular data working. I showed you that I cannot make a phone call using the built-in phone app, and that your iPhone doesn't show a phone number in settings. Now, you saw I was able to make and receive phone calls, check voice veil, send and receive both text and picture messages, but I had to do them from the Freedom Pop app. And we spent a lot of time looking at messages, talking about some of the limitations of using messages with Freedom Pop. And I was unable to get my Freedom Pop phone number registered in messages so that other iPhone users could send me iMessages using my phone number. So I'll need to take a look at that. And then finally, I showed you the My Freedom Pop account app, and we saw some of the features that were there. All right, well, I think that's gonna be it for this video. If you found it useful, give it a like on YouTube. If you want to see more videos from me, subscribe to the Smartphone Matters YouTube channel.
If you have any comments or questions, you can leave them below, or better yet, head on over to Smartphone Matters and leave a reply there. Thanks for watching.